Dr. Jesse Mills, I'm an associate professor of urology at UCLA, and uh, I run the men's clinic at UCLA as well, which is both in Santa Monica and in Westwood, so convenient appointments at either place. And uh, we discussed all kinds of things sex. So essentially, your, uh, the sexual medicine is everything from uh, erectile dysfunction to orgasmic dysfunction to leaking urine during uh, ejaculation or orgasm, as well as a little bit about testosterone therapy in the unique individuals with prostate cancer and hypogonadism. A lot of guys have this barrier to talk about sex with their doctors in general. So we know that men have, about 90% of men, and actually women too, want to talk about sexual matters with their physicians, but only about 30% of physicians feel qualified to discuss sex with their patients. So if you then look at another population of men that are going through a therapy that has a very high risk of sexual dysfunction, it really increases that level of of scrutiny from the patient's perspective and as well as the doctor's perspective because the average person that comes into a physician's office after a radical prostatectomy to get therapy for uh, sexual dysfunction is not going to get the answers that he's going to look for you know, from your average doctor. So the idea is that specialized care is, what, is what's going to drive these men and so part of it is this frustration on the part of the male because if he goes to a number of physicians and has not the answers that he's seeking then a lot of guys will just give up. So the goal for the men's clinic, especially the way that I look at it, is to not only open that access but, but break down those barriers and say look you can tell me anything. I'll give you a hundred bucks if you make me blush. I mean it's hard. So that's what I do and I think that helps guys be able to open up a little bit more and tell me what's really going on. I mean, imagine as a, as a man to go into your physician's office and say, not only can I not get erections, but if I can get an erection and I'm having sex, I start leaking urine in the middle of the erection. It's a really difficult thing for a man to, to come to terms with. So there's a concept that, that's starting to float around that we, I call prehab or prehabilitation prior to prostate cancer surgery mostly, but it works probably for radiation as well, though it's not as well studied. The idea is to enfranchise a man into his own care prior to surgery, have them have the tools and the, and the understanding they need to, be, to give them the best outcome sexually after a radical prostatectomy. I think the, the conventional thought is you're going to go through surgery, we know there's a risk of erectile dysfunction, have the surgery and let's see what happens. So in other words, sit around and wait. And if it comes back, great. If it doesn't, then we have all kinds of therapies we can do for you. Pills and injections and surgeries. But what if we're able to change that? What if we're able to say, if you take 100 guys and you meet them ahead of surgery and, and sit them down and say, look, here's what you're going to go through during your prostate cancer surgery. Here's what I can do to help you through that, both here in this visit two weeks, a month before your surgery, and even a year after your surgery. We're going to hit certain milestones where you're going to be taking a medication, you're going to be exercising, you're going to be losing weight, staying in great physical shape, and sleeping well, as we talked about. That was my, my big lesson is eat, move, sleep, right? We got to do all of those. The, the discipline that I make my guys go through before I put a penile implant in is the same. They're going to stop smoking. They're going to lose weight if they need to. They're going to make sure their blood pressure is controlled. They're going to make sure their blood sugars are controlled if they're diabetic. A lot of stuff before, it be, before they end up in the operating room because I want them to have the best possible surgical outcome, and a lot of that is in their hands. So I think in general, the, the future in sexual medicine is coming up with more ways to do less invasive things, right? So right now we're at this, there's a lot of things out there that we talked about a little bit today, low intensity shockwave therapy, maybe some kind of stem cell therapy, uh, platelet rich pro plasma, all of those things are out there, but none of them is really proven to be effective. So potentially more research to know whether or not these are effective or they're just you know, a bunch of hogwash. The real future, I think, where the science has to he head to is in regenerative medicine. And that's true in anything uh, from orthopedics and joint regeneration. Instead of looking at an organ wearing out and then replacing it, 
what if we grew a new organ or what if we took that piece of tissue and, and uh, rejuvenated it somehow? And that's where the, the future is going to be. And, and certainly we're looking at that at UCLA now. We have setting up a tissue engineering lab uh, for penile tissue to see if we can have a guy actually regenerate his own tissue to replace the disease tissue. So that's going to be, the, that's the exciting thing in the field. It's not new surgeries or it's not new pills, but it's really harnessing the body's ability to regenerate itself.